you can tie this fly on a, a, on a few different hooks. You can use a Mustad Stinger or a, a Tiemco 8089, but I prefer this Gamagatsu B10S Stinger in a size 2. It's uh, the right length shank and uh, you can use it in salt water as well. If you notice I have this mounted technically upside down in this uh, true rotary Renzetti vise. I'm going to be doing half of the fly with the hook point up and the other half I'm going to be tying with it actually hook point down. Uh, this fly is designed to ride hook point up to avoid obstacles and snagging. I'm going to begin by creating about a quarter inch long thread base with this 6 aught black unithread. Now I'm going to flip the hook over and mount on the white Icelandic sheep hair. This is technically the top of the hook shank, but uh, from here on out we're going to refer to this as the bottom of the fly. I'm going to trim this at an angle. I'm going to wrap all of it in, securing it. It's very important that you put this bottom material on the fly first before you mount the dumbbell eye. This provides a little bit of a lift kit to, to create a little bit of distance in between the hook shank and the arbor of the lead eyes that we put on. We're going to be putting on some extra small lead eyes and it sometimes is not quite enough weight to counterbalance the hook point to, to flip this upside down. Now I'm going to tie in the chartreuse Icelandic sheep hair. It's going to be the middle color. You can use other colors as as well. I like, uh, like a fire orange or even a uh, turquoise blue. Looks good. Turn that at an angle. Wrap it in. Now at this point I'm going to flip the hook upside down and we're going to prepare to mount the dumbbell eyes. These are extra small painted lead eyes. Make sure they're centered on the top of, or technically the bottom of the fly figure eight the thread around it so it really secures it firmly. Now I'm going to flip the hook again and now we're going to put the top black piece of Icelandic sheep here on the fly. Make sure you leave a lot extended here out past uh, the, the hook eye. it in firmly. Again, making sure there's a lot of this sticking out past the hook eye because we're going to bring that back and use that. Now stop the thread right at the rear, right at the throat of the fly. Now we're actually going to split the butt ends of this black Icelandic sheep hair and wrap this back toward the tie-in point. Create some bulk to the head of this fly. Now I'm going to wrap this over top with more thread just to tidy it up and make sure everything's latched down. Now I'm going to put in at least two, sometimes even three, whip finishes. This makes sure that uh, this fly will never come unraveled. This is a very, very durable fly and you can take it pike fishing or just about anything and it will never come undone. But to ensure that, I always put in at least two or three whip finishes. Now at this point, the fly is done. 
but I still have to trim it to length. Usually on this size six, I like to make this about about a two and a half, two and three quarter inch long fly. I like to uh, kind of taper the ends of this. It's got kind of a natural look at the rear end of it. Because that's the look that I want right there. I'm going to mount it back in the vise so that I can apply all the head cement. I like to use the hardest hull, or even Sally Hansen's hardest nails, and coat the entire head to include these painted on eyeballs. It'll make them last a lot longer as far as the paint chipping off. Now you can only you only have to put one coat on, but I prefer to put at least five coats on. This makes this fly very very durable. Although you have to wait a little while in between coats. There, I'll let that sit and come back in about 10 minutes. There it is, the Krastowski Minnow. Super fast to tie, ultra durable. Ingredients are inexpensive, and that fly will catch just about anything.